As we all know, this year marked the first wolf hunt in the state of Montana since the gray wolf, Canis lupus, was listed under the Endangered Species Act. The gray wolf, which once heavily populated Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, was exterminated from the United States 80 years ago. Just 20 years ago, conservationists were in the middle of an intense battle to get wolves reintroduced to the northern Rockies of the United States. This past year, driven by successful conservation strategies and high reproduction rates, the wolves were delisted from the Endangered Species Act, setting the foundation for a hunt in Montana and Idaho. There are many reasons for the wolf hunt that occurred, most of them dealing with the population numbers of elk and deer in the area. In short, their numbers were lower than desired. Wolf numbers, on the other hand, were doing just the opposite. They were rising. So how did we get from bitter battle to wolf hunt? It's a story that starts in the mid-1800s, when Americans first began to settle the West. Hunters killed the prey that wolves depended upon, forcing them to prey upon the cattle, ranchers' cattle. With the creation of Yellowstone National Park in 1872, pressure was put on the government to control wolf numbers in and around the park. Control, by the Park Service standards, meant total control, killing all wolves. Rangers would raise dens, stealing the pups and killing them. They would set traps and outright hunt the adults. They would poison elk and bison carcasses so that wolves would die after feeding on them. Due to the efforts of the government and private citizens, the last wolf in Yellowstone was killed in 1926, but the wolf's bad reputation remained alive and well. The stigma against the wolf has stuck with the culture of the West since these early days. There is a hatred toward the wolf on the part of the ranchers that can only be described as fiery and passionate. It took 20 years for wolf advocates to actually succeed in getting the wolf management plan for the U.S. Northern Rockies moving forward after wolves were listed under the Endangered Species Act. In this time, as conservationists battled ranchers over terms of reintroduction, in terms of hunting and retribution, the wolves were already beginning to move themselves back into their former territory, killing livestock, crossing the border from Canada into areas like Glacier National Park and the Blackfoot Indian Reservation. But to get down to Idaho and Wyoming, where they used to be pre prevalent, the wolves required an act of man. But politics and emotion were getting in the way of science and facts, hindering progress and dimming the wolves' chances for survival. We created the national parks for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. But people aren't the only ones who use these areas. People don't use them nearly as much as the wildlife that live in them and belong in them, like the wolves. Even as it appeared the cattlemen would win the wolf wars, Conservation groups earned the right to reintroduce wolves into Yellowstone and Idaho, an area they weren't expecting to get, in January of 1995. The wolves that would eventually repopulate these areas were captured in Canada, using helicopters to tranquilize them, and eventually they were put into shipping crates to be moved into the U.S. 
They were symbolically brought under the historic Roosevelt Arch at the entrance of Yellowstone National Park and brought to their release location. Once there, a last-minute stay order was placed on the walls, prohibiting them from being released into their acclimation pens. After hours and hours of sitting helpless and hungry, a judge finally overturned the stay order that was put in place by the Farm Bureau, and the wolves were free to leave their confinements. Overall, 14 wolves were released into Yellowstone, and 15 were released into the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness. In March of that year, the Park Service began releasing the Yellowstone wolves from their acclimation pens. And I lost the taste for judging right from wrong For my flesh had turned to fur Yeah, and my thoughts they surely were And now we reach the wolf hunt At a time when wolves are so numerous that hunters have been given the chance to help manage them At the start of 2009, there were about 1,645 wolves in the three-state area 500 of them in Montana the wolf hunt was a divisive move. Many people disagreed with the tactics, and defenders of wildlife, along with other conservation groups, went so far as to sue fish, wildlife, and parks over the delistment. Obviously, the wolves have an effect on the ecosystem, but sometimes it's hard to tell just how strong that impact is, which made it hard for the state to set a quota. In September, District Judge Don Malloy turned down requests put forth by 14 conservation groups to stop the wolf hunt. The supporters of the hunt can now legally kill wolves with a permit on September 15th. The quota for the state was set at 75 wolves to be taken from areas in the Bob Marshall and Beartooth wildernesses. The reaction from the public regarding the wolf hunt was overwhelming. Thousands of licenses were sold on the first day they became available. The hunt was wildly successful. Wolves were killed much faster than expected, and some hunting areas even had to be closed just days after opening. Soon enough, the quota for Montana was met. In the end, the people that got the most wolves were the ones who weren't even looking for them. Only 15% of Montana's wolf population was taken, with an estimated 20% increase in number to occur later in the breeding year. In Idaho, the hunt was extended in order to ensure that their quota of 220 wolves was met. So now that the Montana wolf hunt is over, what have we learned? There have been a few problems with this inaugural hunt, which was to be expected. The biggest flaws in the hunting regulations had to do with the locations of the hunts. The state was heavily criticized for allowing people to hunt the wolves so closely to Yellowstone National Park. In fact, four wolves in the park's heavily studied cottonwood pack were killed, including both the alpha male and female. Not only were these wolves important for research, but they weren't affecting livestock at all. One of the reasons that the hunt was started to begin with. If future hunts occur, there will probably be stricter rules regarding where hunting can take place, focusing it more in agricultural areas. That is, if a future hunt will take place. The wolves are probably going to get relisted though, since the process that got them taken off was a little sketchy. Overall, wolves have a healthy population in Montana, and the wolf hunt, though controversial, had its reasons, and these reasons, in my opinion, were valid.